in the peace uh, and conflict world, peace is a um, it's a word that actually we divide into two: positive peace and negative peace. Negative peace being an imposed peace, or a kind of peace that works for the majority party or power, as it were, and positive peace, which is much more negative peace being imposed, positive peace being a, a cooperative peace where people are really engaged together on that. I think that's kind of relevant to peace tech work, actually, because technology is so dominant and people are not unpicking some of the thinking behind building new innovations and technologies. And that is partly what this uh, group is about. So it's not only looking at new interventions, way of using tech in interventions and research and bringing in models from the peace side uh, into technology, but it's also thinking about how to build cooperative online social media societies as much as on the ground. So that's what we're trying to do. Uh, we're a group uh, that are kind of looking at how we can harness the power then of information technologies. Um, and we're new, and we're multidisciplinary, we've got practitioners, we've got theorists, uh, we're working in different communities and different organisations around the globe actually, we're exploratory, but we're only one tiny initiative, and there is a new, larger, emerging global peace tech field, uh, which we are trying to build from this hub in terms of uh, doing this, basically, trying to think about how to use tech and peace and conflict and understanding to address challenging issues. So you've had a link, I'm sure James will also put a link to our website into the web, into the chat box, but get in touch with us if you'd like to join. We meet monthly and we're developing new strands of work in lots of directions. I'm just going to uh, pause the screen share there and I'm going to ask James to create some breakout rooms or maybe threes randomly assigned and for you guys to think about why did you sign up to this? What is your interest in peace tech and what would you like to take away from it? So in a sec, you'll see a, a randomly assigned breakout room appear on your screen. If you want to jump in there for five minutes and talk to whoever you end up with, introduce yourselves. And then when we come back, perhaps you can put some of the thoughts that came up in your breakout rooms uh, back into the chat box. So I don't know, James, are we cool with that? Is that easy to go? That should, you should have just received a little pop-up now. out of conversation sorry if so that's that's the way we break out rooms right so i'm just going to go back briefly to the powerpoint um and just say so today what we're really hoping to do is is from all of you that have come here um we're hoping to pull your ideas and expertise so rather than just so the presenters talking at you we really would love it if you can step into the conversation and bring any perspective um there is no rights and wrongs for us and we're really thinking about what is the future where are the future trends and directions for peace tech and how importantly do we measure the impact of that in different spheres that is really going to be important as the field is growing you have to show how it's working and there may well be some of you that have got some ideas about that and then lastly, this idea of well, what is the need for peace tech? What, what, what is the really the key contribution that this idea of peace tech can bring? And we'll kind of collect up our thoughts about that if we can at the end of in the closing plenary. So in a minute, James is going to uh, offer you three options for your workshops. Um, and we'll be in each of the workshops for an hour and 15 minutes and the note takers will be recording those so that's great please could you keep your cameras on in the breakout rooms i know it's quite easy to have them off but actually for proper conversation it really helps if we have them on and don't 
keep yourself quiet thinking, oh, I'm not sure if that's interesting or relevant. You know, bring your ideas because everything is welcome and there'll always be a spark of something fascinating that will build on another idea. And at the same time, be aware that, you know, you need to kind of keep yourselves and your contributions kind of short and sharp and to the point just so that everyone can get them. So, oh, no, I can't do it there. So what we've got today, we've had some issues with COVID and this and that, so we're condensing uh, workshop one into two parts. So the first part of workshop one, the first 45 minutes, 30 minutes or so, is going to be uh, Eric talking to us about an example of using AI in uh, with conflict re resolution and how to design innovative tools. And then Kate is going to pick up after him and do a session on the future of peace building in a data driven world. So kind of looking at it in a bigger, pulling out from one example out to the bigger picture. In workshop two, we've got um, three presentations. It will be fantastic of different ways that data mapping and visualization are already being used. Uh, to enhance peace building and so without of those three contributions uh, there'll then be a really interesting discussion I'm sure to be had about how could that be built on and where could that go to and the workshop three has a fantastic opportunity to see these images that have been collected over two years from Ukraine before the current um, before the current invasion uh, but post the Crimea invasion, thinking about how do I see self and I? So it's actually uh, people's own images about the self and the other. But that in itself uh, opens up a great conversation about what are the strengths and the dangers of visual data and how it is used. So they're very different, these workshops, but they're all going to be really interesting. And uh, what I'm going to do is suggest that uh, James puts our options uh, on the screen now and we can choose where we're going to and we'll all come back together in an hour and a quarter and hear what went on across the workshop programme. Are you happy to do that James? I'll stop sharing. Everyone, We seem to be back in the one big group and I hope you've been having some good discussions where you've been. We've certainly been having a great time. And what I've asked James to do is to set up um some breakout rooms with just three of us in them so there'll be quite a lot of rooms and just maybe you know you'll have done a lot of listening maybe done some thinking uh maybe just have a little reflection about what's new what's really stuck out for you what you'd like to take forward we've got a whiteboard link as well which um we can put in the message box and you can take it with you. I've got to try and find that though at the moment. Let me see. So maybe if you want to open the whiteboard link, if you're in a position to do so and join your room and then just any thoughts individually that have come up that you think are worth us hanging on to, please do add them there. So James, are you okay to open the little rooms? We'll just go for five minutes and then we'll come back together and hear a bit from the workshop note takers. Oh, you're there. Okay. Oh, hi. I okay. couldn't see, see your arm. The to, okay. Yeah, um, there are actually three of us, so we're just going to talk in bits. Okay. Just a few seconds. Yeah, the, the first speaker, Eric, talked a whole lot about um, innovative conflict resolution versus technology. You know, talked a whole lot about the um, the process of the war in, um, in the, the Israeli war and then um, how things came about. Um, I'm just trying to be very brief because I know we're out of time right now. And we talked about the use of artificial intelligence, how to 
how it helps and influences conflict and how that this can really help out for the nearest future um, to, to, to bring peace without having to cross boundaries, you know, you, making use of social, the social media and, um, and the technology, you know, it's, it was, he had a very, it was, he didn't have so much time on his side because he had to jump out, but he, he did a, a good job talking and educating us them the need and response to mitigate violence with technology and a whole lot was um, deliberated upon. Then Professor Kate, fantastic, she was so good, you know, I, I wish we had more time to talk and talk. But, um, she talked a whole lot about the data science and then um, and I cited different examples and the, the process, the dynamics of um, data analytics. And um, we had questions about how this can be useful in the in places like um, the Western world. It's more useful in the Western world, but in the um, in the third world countries, it could be a little a big problem. And she gave lovely answers in, in settling um, in talking about it. I'll allow my other other participants to talk to because we are ahead of time. That's great, Jensen. Thank you. Um, Manoa, I can see your hand hand is up as well. Hi. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add this to to what what the speakers talk, talked about. Uh, they said uh, it was important to use uh, data science to build a narrative or convey a narrative. But uh, what I thought of it is since data is confidential some more at most times and we cannot just give anybody you know data to build a narrative for peace building so i think we need to be very careful when we talk about bringing a multidisciplinary you know platform where everybody can just add to it so i think that's that's what, what my point of view is we need to be careful that's great thank you Thank you. And, and add that to the whiteboard as well, because it's good for us to make a note of all the different challenges and, and obstacles that people can see and, and we're aware of as we were talking. So workshop two, who was um, note taking for us in workshop two? Do you want to put your hand up? Can anyone see something I'm not? Yes, Beryl. And so who was it? So which one of you would like to go first? Yeah, you go first, Darren. Uh, thank you. Um, I'll, so one, well, the most uh, interesting thing to me that was pointed out is the importance of trying to create bite-sized bite forms of relaying information to the wider community on the internet specifically. Um, uh, so this, this was actually very important. And uh, I also, we were also discussing also on how uh, frameworks have also been put in place so people uh, who do have access to this information um, cannot essentially twist or misuse the information or data to further maybe bad initiatives or 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 uh, missing spread it or the spreading of misinformation um, so that was a very important point uh, that i realized in the discussion that we had mm, lovely great thank you and abdul Rahman. Uh, hi, um, just like uh, my friend mentioned, that was uh, one of the things that was interesting to hear about. Also, um, I asked uh, about how we can uh, act uh, like how, how, how ads are acting. So how we see ads are showing information related to us all the time and how they are always appearing when convenient uh, for us to see what the ad wants to show us. And uh, uh, I was suggested by Serge that uh, uh, we we can use Google to help us be on the first page. We can try to be. We we might we need to be mind that it takes a lot of money to show all of these ads everywhere, which makes sense. But uh, that raised another question to me: is that how much are people aware of uh, the importance of the data they're looking at? How can we uh, raise awareness that um, you need to be careful where your attention is going? Some data can help you know the truth. Some data will lead you to give data to the wrong people. So it will, it felt very important that. All of this is, is going to be a lot better if the general public are more aware of how data can be used and what is going on really in the in the tech world that will be uh, coming soon. Uh, because uh, just like me and Nabila were talking to in the breakout room of three, is that um, the world is moving to new ways of governing, which is not just based on location. It is also based on the virtual uh, 
um, a connectivity of people and how I could be I could be in contact with someone in a totally no, in a different country more than the people that I'm living with here. Um, what does that mean and how can I um, make sure that I use that as, as best to help me and my community uh, reach you know uh, positive peace maybe? Mm. Great, lovely. Thank you to both of you. Um, and any thoughts from anybody that you're hearing as it's sparking, put them on the whiteboard. And so our last workshop was workshop three on the images from Ukraine. And who was taking notes for that? Do you want to put your hand up? Whatever it was. A few participants raised their hands and I can't see them. Yes. Yeah, so, Odashiko, do you want to go? Um, hi, everyone. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, great. Um, we had a really good session in our group. Um, so KM, Karen, okay. Karen and Nabila, both of them are currently working on a project in Ukraine and the project is kind of analyzing the visuals and images on Ukraine crisis. And some of the things that came up in our, in our group is how we can see tech you know, and these images to be able to create solutions in our world today and how the, the strengths from the dangers of visual data can be. And some of the keywords um, created in the project kind of focused on how people from the crisis, you know, how they see each other, how they want to be seen. There were some questions that were posed in their project from the participants and there were eight of them and which they expanded to 16 key questions on how these keywords, keywords rather, not key questions, how these keywords can actually antagonize people in conflict, you know, and how we can build around this for peace building and the current crisis to bring about peace in our world. And we took out time to look at images of people who um, are experiencing these crises. And it was really very cool to see how people portray their feelings in these images. We, we had images of people who, kind of drew trees and beds and drew barricades of how they feel trapped. We had images of how people want unity, want peace, you know, and the significance of this sketching, you know, how these can produce art within conflict and how these ideas can kind of uniquely help us in, you know, peace building. And from the images displayed, you know, it can help us to extract meanings from the images that are displayed by these people and how that can kind of help us guard peace, you know, and where peace tech comes in. I, Mary in our group had several contributions and Helen made a comment on how these images, you know, are being captured and how we can use the feelings from these images to resolve issues. And, you know, keeping these human relations and grouping these images together can kind of help us have a broader picture or a broader audience. And I think Mary mentioned the fact that if we can have a, a digital gallery, not just having these images in you know, local galleries, you could have these images as a digital gallery so that people can see and feel the experiences of other people. And Nodu mentioned uh, a few things about the results of this diverse group and how can we really capture their personal experiences because people portray their experiences based on what they're feeling. So, and that brought about authenticity. And I think James also mentioned the fact that for we who are viewing these images, how can we capture our own personal feelings as regards those images. So we are viewing images of people who are experiencing crisis, but how can we capture our feelings? You know, so these are things that we need to look into. I think that's basically what we discussed in our- Sorry, group. Mary, I'm just, I'm just gonna stop. I'm just gonna stop you there. I'm not Mary. I, I'm just gonna stop you there because we're running out of time so much, but thank you for giving a flavor of it. And what we're gonna do next, Yes, Helen, do you want to add as well? Yeah, yeah, just a little point. Abigail captured everything nicely, um, but something that one of the points that stood out for me was the fact that um, women were more, were more enthusiastic about participating in this project. And um, if you see the images from most of the women, it depicted love, peace, companionship. You, it, it, it kind of underscores the points for me, the role of women. In, in conflict resolution. And um, I think um, women are more um, um, available and ready to embrace peace. And these mm -hmm. projects that we studied in our own group kind of um, um, clarified that for us. Thank you. Mm.
Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to the note takers for actually listening hard and tracking some of those conversations. And you've got some, you've got a form that we're asking you to fill in and just email back to us straight away before you forget what you were hearing so that we can gather up the conversations. And thank you too to all of the presenters. It's slightly chaotic. We've had to move things around, but I hope you've ended up having good conversations. And certainly there's been an enormous amount of chat going on in the various groups that I've been in. So very many appreciative thanks from the IPCG uh, International, uh, in, I can't even think what it is now, Interdisciplinary Peace Tech Group, and of course from JGI as well. I very appreciate your efforts for the event and I hope to see you again. And get in touch with us if you'd like to join the group. We meet regularly, we're growing, and we'd really like any more contributors who would like to take part. So thank you so much and see you all again soon. I hope. Yeah. Thank you, Great. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much, bye everyone.